Okay, so this is ACSL competition one, and the topic is recursion. So we're going to go over what recursion is, uh, what recursive functions are, and then uh, three different examples that you're going to need to know for the ACSL uh, problems themselves. Okay, so first of all, let's define what a recursive function is. So here is an example of a recursive function called g of x. It is a piecewise function because it's uh, divided into two different pieces, one for when x is greater than zero, and one piece for uh, any other case. Um, so before we explain this, let's first uh, understand what an actual function is. So in math class, you might see a function something like f of x, and this function might equal um, an output like x plus 3. So if f of x equals x plus 3, we have a distinct output, and whenever we input a value for x, we're going to spit out a value um, by substituting it into this function. So you can see that it's defined explicitly, this function. Now if we go up to the recursive function, we can see that it is instead defined with another function with inside of it, and that is uh, g of x as well. So a function that is defined with itself is called a recursive function, because whenever you try to solve for that function, you then uh, input a value into itself again. So an example would be, uh, if this function was instead f of x equals, um, let's say, f of x plus 3, f of x plus 3, minus 1. This is an example of a recursively defined function. Now, it would be an infinitely recursive function, but uh, regardless, it is a, rec a recursive function. So if we inputted 3 for x, for example, so f of 3, we would get f of 6 minus 1. And now to solve for f of 3, we would then have to find out what f of 6 is first. And to find out what f of 6 is, we would then have to find out what f of 9 is, and so on and so forth. Uh, usually in the recursive function problems, there's a base case where we find an actual answer for a function. And once we find an answer, for example, if we know that f of 9 equals 3, then we can work up the ladder and then find out what f of 3 equals. So we know that f of 6 equals f of 9 minus 1, so 3 minus 1. So now f of 6 equals 2. Therefore, f of 3 would equal 2 minus 1, which equals 1. So now we've just found out what f of 3 equals by substituting these function values back into themselves. So to solve recursion, that's all we have to do. We simply have to substitute the values of each of the functions uh, into the function beforehand to get our answer. So if we look at this example here, for example, if they want us to find what g of 11 is, how would we do this? So obviously 11 is greater than 0, so it satisfies the first condition. So we would, we would have to use the uh, upper, uh, the upper function. So g of 11 equals g of 11 minus 3, which is 8, or, yeah, 8, plus 1. Now we have to find what g of 8 is. g of 8, also still greater than 0, equals g of 5 plus 1. Then we have to find g of 5, and we keep going until we reach the base case, which is 3x. So g of 2 plus 1 and then g of 2 equals g of negative 1 plus 1 and then if we go up here we reach the base case g of negative 1 is no longer greater than 0 and so this equals negative 3 since negative 1 times x is or sorry uh, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 so now we just have to substitute this negative 3 back into all the other functions until we get our answer so we know that g of negative 1 equals negative 3, so we can replace this here with a negative 3. And now negative 3 plus 1 would give us negative 2. So now we know that g of 2 equals negative 2. And then we keep going up the ladder. So this would be negative 2. That would make this 1, or negative 1. This would be negative 1, so it would make this 0. And finally, we know that g of 8 is 0, so 0 plus 1 is 1, 
And now we know that g of 11, which was what we asked, what we were asked for, equals 1. And this is how you would solve that. Okay, now let's move on to a slightly more complicated example in the next problem. Okay, so in this example, we have to find f of 6, 5. So you can see this function is a little bit more complicated than the last one because it has two variables that we have to use to solve. Uh, it's, it's pretty similar, the same sort of process, but we just have to put in two variables and worry about them as we solve the problem. So these are the conditions over here for the piecewise function. Let's draw a little curly brace to indicate that's piecewise. And uh, let's start solving. So first, we start with f of 6, 5. And this would equal what? So the first condition says when x is greater than y and x is greater than 0. So um, that satisfies both of those conditions. So we would go with the first uh, function, 2 plus f of x minus 3, which would be 3, comma y minus 1, which would be 4. Okay, now we have to find what f of 3, 4 is to continue solving. So f of 3, 4 would equal, and then now we have to look at our conditions again. So obviously x is no longer greater than y, so the first condition does not match. If we look at the second condition, it says when y is greater than or equal to x and x is greater than 0, and this is true. So we have to use the second function, 1 plus f of 3, 4, or yx now, as you can see. So that's a little bit of a tricky... Uh, way of putting that, but it's yx, so now we have to switch it actually. So now it becomes 4, 3. Okay, now we solve for f of 4, 3. This would trigger the first condition again, x is greater than y and greater than 0. So it would become 2 plus x minus 3, which is f of 1, comma uh, y minus 1, which is 2. f of 1, 2 equals this is the second condition, since y is greater. It would become 1 plus f of 2, 1. Now we go back up to the first condition, since x is again greater than y. And it would be f of 2, 1 equals 2 plus f of x minus 3, so negative 1, 0. And now this finally gets us to the base case, since x becomes less than or equal to 0 which is uh, the base case. So this up here, we know that f of negative 1, 0 equals 0, since that is the solution, 0. So now we can start plugging it into our functions. So we can replace this with 0, and then start climbing up the ladder again. 2 plus 0 is 2, so we replace our next function with 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So f of 1, 2 is 3. f of 4, 3 equals 5. This 2 plus 3 is 5. And then f of 3, 4 finally equals 6. So we put a 6 there. So our final answer equals 8. So f of 6, 5, which was the problem, equals 8. And that is the solution. So you can see how we went through each of the steps and recursively um, went back into the functions and substituted all of the functions out for their values to find our end result. So this was a little bit more complicated, but the last example is going to have a completely different method for solving because we're going to look at uh, multiple function definitions within the same condition. So in this last example, um, we have the recursive function for the Fibonacci series, which you may be familiar with. Um, and in this uh, recursive function, you can see that there's two function definitions, f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2, in the same condition, which is uh, when, whenever n is greater than 1. So in these kinds of cases, what happens is each time that we call the function f of n, uh, we have to then find two functions, f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2, to figure out the answer to f of n. So uh, at the end, uh, when we solve this problem, we get a sort of tree diagram where each and every function call branches off into two more. So to solve this, we start with um, whatever we have to find, which is f of 4. So let's write that up here, f of 4. And then we start branching it out until we reach the, uh, the end point, which is whenever n is less than or equal to 1, uh, our answer would equal n. So until we reach that point, we have to continue branching this out. 
Whenever you do these kinds of problems, one tip is to always branch out the leftmost side of the tree first before you do anything else because it might help you solve the rest of it later. So we start off with f of 4, so we branch it into two functions. It becomes f of n minus 1, which is 3, plus f of n minus 2, which is 2. Okay, so now let's, let's uh, forget about this for a while, and we'll just branch out the leftmost side constantly until we find the answer to that. So f of 3 would then branch into f of 2 plus f of 1. So f of 1 has reached the base case, so we'll just stop that there. And then f of 2, we continue branching this. f of 2 becomes f of 1 plus f of 0. And those two have reached the base case as well, so we're going to stop there for that side too. So now that we've branched that completely out, we can start solving. So first, we find out what f of 1 and f of 0 are. So we know that they both equal n. So f of 1 would equal, let's write it over here, f of 1 would equal 1, and f of 0 would equal 0. So we can replace those values with 1 and 0. So this would equal 1, and this would equal 0. And we add them together to get what f of 2 equals. So when we add these together, we get that f of 2 equals 1. So let's write that over here as well. So f of 2. This is slightly out of order. f of 2 also equals 1, and we know that f of 0 equals 0. Okay, so we can replace this function with the value 1. And then we also know uh, already that f of 1 equals 1, so we can replace that function again with 1. When we add those together, we get 2. So f of 3 equals 2. Let's so again replace this with 2. And now we reach the top of our tree, and we have 2 plus f of 2. Now we didn't branch this side out, but we don't actually need to, because we know already that f of 2 equals 1, since we branched out the left side first. So we can actually just replace that with 1, since it's the same function call. So that's why it's always helpful to branch one side out completely before starting the other side because you might get some helpful substitutions like that. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and so our final answer for f of 4 equals 3, and that's how we solve this kind of recursion problem. So hopefully that helped. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please ask, and uh, I'll also post some extra practice for this uh, in the remind.